gun we just shot with. And this is the gun in your film, Knuckle Jack. Yes, and I love this gun. I bought this gun. We lived in an RV for a year. And uh, I bought it for good sleeping. Good sleep. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of intense because they almost didn't let us shoot with it because the barrel is incredibly short, actually. Cool. I think a shotgun is good because it's loud mm -hmm. it's, and yeah. it's un, it's kind of unwieldy it's not like walking around with an armed like you know a, handgun or anything like that, or something like that. this is something that makes a lot of noise it's scary looking I think the, just the racking of it says everything yeah right most exactly. people do that sound, okay let's not rob this guy and, um, <laughs> and we kind of just walk out backwards When I bought my A70, I bought it because I was doing a lot of target shooting and, and, and skeet shooting, trap shooting. Um, and then you know, it was in my house, it's locked up, there's the ammo in, it, you know, in the closet, the you know, gun is on the inside of the room, and I'm like, well, I feel safer now. And then I'm like, immediately, it was just like, yeah, but how long would it take for me to get the gun unlocked and put a round in it to actually, if I really need, like, I mean, we're talking like dire straits, like really something, it would take a little time. And so I'm wondering how, the safe, the, you know, the, the safety feeling of it is almost kind of like a, like a placebo. Like, what do you think of that? I, mean, like, I think there's two kinds of bad situations. There's when you're in your own home, you know your own home. You know which toys are sitting where, where the couch is, where the table is. Right. Someone who's breaking into your house in the middle of the night doesn't know all that stuff, so that gives you a little time. It does. It does. So you always got to think that someone's going to be bumbling around. You're in your own place. Gotcha. So if you if someone's really breaking in and you hear them and then they bumble around for a little bit, you got this, you know. But if someone's really good, mm -hmm. it's back to the Stone Age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're back to just like yeah, trying to this alone. <laughs> Well, I mean, like in your film, Michael Jack, there's actually a scene where um, uh, you, your character's breaking in, and you know this one, this time it's going kind of wrong. And I noticed how quickly that, that character, the guy whose house you're robbing, yeah. has a loaded 12 gauge. It, it, it's not like he he didn't go around the house assembling it. Like it was just a pick up and go type of situation. So it's like, and I know people that have loaded. Well, he starts out with a knife. That's right. You should, he, so what's way. funny about that to me is and. Actually, this addresses exactly what we're talking about. That character in Knuckle Jack starts out with a knife, which is something that I think we all kind of start out with in defense mode. Mm -hmm. And then he runs around the house for a second with the knife, and then he goes, he's way down in the basement, and he finds his shot. Oh, yeah, my shotgun. My shotgun's down in the basement. So that's kind of the joke, is mm -hmm. kind of like this guy does have a shotgun. He is, it is his home. And it's loaded, and, 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 it's loaded and it's down in the basement. <laughs> Somebody brought up something that I was really glad about that I didn't know, and that's when uh, Knuckle Jack offers the gun to his nine-year-old niece and asks her, do you want to take a shot? And mm -hmm. that shows this kid, uh, this uncle's complete immaturity. And, you right. know, and so, yeah, some, some of the things that we've, we've, we've brought up have been pointed out. Um, For me, that one was like he uh, trusted her enough and trusted himself enough that he wouldn't like, like I saw it when I watched, like, it was like, oh, I trust him actually. Like, for me, no, seriously. Like, <laughs> no, that's like, great. I trusted that character that like, f like he wouldn't let anything happen. To him. Well, I think that's what's fun about it. Mm -hmm. I, think that, I think that's what's fun about any scene is some people look at that and, oh my God, what an irrational fool. Right. And then some people look at it and be like, I love that uncle. Cool. Ah! Pull! Our first movie together, we all, my, both my daughters were always talking about they wanted to be like Selena Gomez. And I was like, it's not so easy to be an actress, you right. know what I mean? You think Selena Gomez looks like she's got, you know, an easy life. She doesn't. She right. works 16 hours a day and has got agents and everything else. I, I still want to be an actress. We wanted, we had a storyline, uh, Toby and I, and so we are like, you know what? We're going to go live in an RV and we're going to shoot a movie and you girls can see what it's like to be an and that was the first, What was that called? The first movie was called Rumble Strips. I think kids are incredibly smart and they're very honest and their naive look on the world is uncluttered with lots of bullshit. So when they give you their opinion, I oftentimes think it's spot on. 
So they don't have a lot of that filter, like a lot of that, well, maybe I shouldn't say that because so-and-so might not like it. They're just like, you're full of shit. Just nail it. That's yeah, exactly no, I agree, right. I agree. I agree. Pull. Pull. So if they thought it was cheesy, they just said, that's cheesy, Dad. That looks stupid. Or that nobody would say that. And we'd reshoot it. So maybe what we're saying here really is that every independent, maybe even Hollywood feature film should have at least two to three, five or six, uh, like uh, eight year olds and 10 year olds that are just complete no bullshit. I mean like, no, that's, what do you think of Spider-Man? Cause like, this fucking sucks, get rid of it. Like redo it. I, yeah, I'm it. not joking. <laughs> I think that that's what you should have. Yeah. You should have, a, you should have a five year old, an eight year old, a 14 year old and an 18 year old. Just and they should be the ones who's, who get <laughs> final cut. You know? Nice, nice. Because they're genius. Well, you guys didn't start this way, like, so you started with that one movie, and, and then the film, the Knuckle Jack, also, I haven't seen Rumble Strips, but seems to be, obviously, kind of, your, film, your family is growing together as your film uh, process is growing together, as your life is growing together. It seems, and I, I don't know, again, because I've never done it, does that get too much, um, does that too much intertwined? Is that, after a while, is it hard to, like, okay, this is movie time and not like you growing up time, or is it like, is it, is it nice to see your films grow up on film? I mean, does that okay, get a little uh, tough? Back and forth? I, I think like the underlying question is, are we stage parents? And the answer is absolutely oh, not. Oh, no, 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 not at all. I was saying like when you're, so you're in a scene, you're her father, uh -huh, daughter, okay. Knuckle Jack, and I'm sure you're, you're acting with your daughter. There has to be a moment where you're looking at her and you're like, my little girl is growing up right in front of me on camera and we're shooting the movie. Like, so I'm saying like, it's not a stage. Oh, it's totally it's romantic. Pull. I think what's great about this is it's an education where they're given a lot of leeway and people, instead of uh, grown-ups coming to them and telling them, mm. boop, 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 you know, like Charlie mm. Brown, mm. they're asking them mm. something. And, and, I, I, and it's really fun, and it's, and, you know. I'm wondering if, like, if that's maybe what's missing every once in a while from indie film. I mean, like, some of the ones that you, people watch, you can tell have the real heart in them. Like, I watched Michael Jack, and, um, Whatever, whatever an audience would watch and think about, you can't, you cannot not say it has an incredible heart to it. So it's like sometimes you watch something like it's completely sterile, has it's missing its heart, and, and you wonder like if it's, if it's not because it's being treated more like a um, more like a business, a less like a family, yeah, I mean, less like a like a yeah. learning experience and a family experience. Mm -hmm.